I invite Mr. Ronald Gold to please come forward. President Wyatt, it is my distinct privilege and honor to present Ronald Gold for the honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters. Mr. Gold's life was already distinguished by hard work and achievement. He received his dual undergraduate degrees from the University of Pennsylvania's College of Arts and Sciences and Wharton School, and a master's degree in business from Columbia University. He went on to a successful 25-year career, year career in international equities with Lemon Brothers and Barclays. But life presented him with challenges he could never have anticipated. As we will hear in his commencement address, Ron Gold and his wife Betsy did not succumb to those challenges. Rather, they seized the opportunity to reach a new level of accomplishment and service. His courage, compassion, and creativity exemplify the best attributes of an education in the liberal arts and science. Therefore, I am pleased to present Ronald Gold for the honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters. Ronald, whereas you have exemplified in your work and life, the power of learning to effect positive change. And whereas your creative thinking and resolute commitment have demonstrated the mutually reinforcing qualities of social and business entrepreneurship, and whereas your story of triumph seized from trial inspires us and reminds us that wisdom and grace placed in service to others is our greatest fulfillment. Be it resolved by the, Mon by the Board of Trustees of the Monmouth College with charter trustees and trustees in board assembled that Ronald Gold is awarded the honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters, with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. I am honored to present you with this diploma, and I ask that you be invested with the appropriate hood. Congratulations, Ron. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for the great hospitality everybody here has shown me. In particular, I want to thank President Clarence Wyatt, Mark Kapinski, and the Board of Directors, and the faculty. To all the graduates and their families, congratulations. Well done. And to all the moms, happy Mother's Day. When I think of commencement speakers, and maybe you're like me, I picture a famous, wise, accomplished person who has important advice to share. Well, let's start today by noting that I'm not famous. I'm sure you've never heard of me. Second, I'd like to think of myself as somewhat wise. In actuality, the latest chapter in my life has imparted a few good doses of unexpected wisdom. And accomplished? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. In thinking about what to share with you today, I thought of the boxer and world-renowned philosopher, Iron Mike Tyson, who told us everyone has a plan until they get smacked in the face. He couldn't be more right. Everyone really has a plan until they get smacked in the face. How are you going to handle it when it's your face? For me, that's exactly what happened eight years ago today, today, this year. On an unseasonably warm Thanksgiving weekend when I was bicycling on a quiet suburban road with a group of friends. We rode 50 miles, we're headed back just a few miles from home when an out of control SUV came barreling at us. The driver hit my buddy Zach first, and then she hit me head on without braking. It was 1.06 p.m. in the afternoon, and the driver had fallen fast asleep. I was immediately medevaced to the nearest trauma unit, but I wasn't expected to survive. In case you're wondering, 
I did. <laughs> the trauma surgeon saved my life several times over the ensuing 11 weeks in ICU, but my spine was crushed and I'm now in this chair. Until that time, my life was going pretty much as I had planned. There's that word again, planned. When I graduated from college a few decades ago, what was my plan? I was looking forward to one day getting married and having a family. I planned an exciting career in finance. I didn't know where that would take me, but I hoped to travel both for business and for pleasure. I planned to have new experiences. I planned to test myself athletically and I became an accomplished rock climber, traveling with like-minded climbers throughout the Northeast. Fast forward, and my wife and I had three healthy, well-adjusted daughters. And I had a successful and stimulating career and an active life. I was a great skier, a strong cyclist, a good runner, and a lousy golfer. Now, I'm not saying my path happened in a straight line. I certainly had jobs that didn't work out. I decided to focus on Asian equities, which was stimulating. I was able to leverage the rise of Japan, Korea, and particularly China, as they became integral parts of the global economy. I traveled to Asia frequently. I engaged with a diverse group of colleagues and clients and I learned so much about the world. But that's all a part of the journey. The challenge of figuring out what makes you happy. That's not a path I could have dreamed of upon graduation, but it certainly became a path that I loved. Plan to be passionate about your career. Don't take the job that doesn't stoke it. But it isn't something you need to be consumed with either. It may actually take you 20 years before a plan guides you. And you may not see it now, but you'll have plenty of different jobs over a lifetime. And there's plenty of time to follow your heart. Secondly, plan to show grit and fortitude. You will have challenges. You don't know what they are yet. But how you handle them when they come your way speaks to everything about your character. Your futures are bright. You live in the greatest country in the world. And you can do almost anything. But it won't always be blue skies. Like Iron Mike, and like me, you will get smacked in the face. I don't know if it's a jab or a roundhouse, but you'll need to dig deep when it happens. Almost no one achieves success without lots of hard work. And what prevents you from doing the work? Some may say laziness, but I don't think so. I think it's fear. Actor Will Smith has this wonderful video about how he and a group of friends goaded each other into going skydiving. As he was thinking of the dive, in the hours leading up to the jump, it petrified him. He was thinking of all avenues to back out. And then, when he was finally pushed out, all he felt for the next 30 or 40 seconds was pure bliss. His conclusion, the best things in life are at the other end of fear. Anything that can move you away from fear of failure is your key of success. It allows you to become more focused, go forward, and take chances. After my accident, I spent five months in hospitals. When I came home, I had nurses, caregivers, therapists, ramps, hospital bed, wound vacs, infusions. Well, I think you get the idea. And I could barely move on my own. With all that going on, I had no interest in moving forward with my life. Or even seeing visitors. I just sat around 
not engaging much with anyone. I had so many why me's. Why me? Why did the driver lose control of the SUV at that very moment? A one in a million or trillion occurrence. Why did I have to be paralyzed? Couldn't I just break a leg? Why couldn't she be driving a smaller vehicle? And can I just have a do-over? With some gentle prodding from my wife, did I just say gentle? <laughs> because it was anything but gentle. I set out to make the best of things. For us, that started with embracing for our daughters that most important lesson in life, teaching them to handle whatever life throws at you. Doing so was the hardest thing I've ever done. It's the fear of failure that Will, Will Smith speaks to. I had to change my plans for myself and recapture as much independence as I could. I learned to drive with hand controls and how to take apart and reassemble my wheelchair each time I get in and out of the car so that I don't have to rely on others. We moved to a new home that we designed with my wheelchair in mind. We even put a, kitchen, a special kitchen sink in so that I could do the dishes. <laughs> now that was five years ago, and doing the dishes myself is still on my list of things to one day get to. <laughs> I guess I never really wanted to do them anyway. As for sports, most of my previous pursuits were now out of the question or uninteresting to me as a paraplegic. But I was curious about rowing. Today I compete in adaptive races and I hope to enter the famous Head of the Charles race in Boston this fall. And finally, I had to get back into the workforce. I was ready for a change from Wall Street and I'd always dreamed of becoming an entrepreneur. This was my chance. So after many challenging and discouraging experiences, trying to find good quality home care and caregivers to help me every day, my wife and I created a managed marketplace to connect families looking for home care with a highly vetted caregiver network. It's sort of an e-harmony for home care, but with the vetting and referencing to bring a high level of transparency to the process. We called our startup Lean on We because we knew firsthand that when you need home care, you need a team to lean on. Look, I hope none of you encounter the type of adversity thrown my way. But as I discuss, stuff will happen. How you handle it speaks to your fortitude. I had to dig deeper than ever before and you will too. So make your plan. And along the way, plan to be attentive. Plan to be open to new experiences that Mammoth education has prepared you for. It may be newer, harder, different, and bigger than anything you were planning for. Getting myself back in the workforce and re-engaging with life was incredibly intimidating particularly as a disabled entrepreneur. But here we are. Not a day goes by that I don't think about my accident. But I can't dwell on the past either. Steve Jobs said, everything in life was created by people no smarter than you. Okay, it's true. Steve Jobs was smarter than most of us. But the point is still valid. Mammoth has prepared you. You're fighting Scots, after all. You just need to believe it and go out there and put yourself on the line in whatever it is that you do. I can assure you that when you get to my age, you won't regret much of what you've done along the way. Unless, perhaps, you're running for higher office or in the running to be nominated for the Supreme Court. <laughs> but you will regret things you may have done but didn't out of fear and uncertainty.
I'm a living, breathing example that crazy, random, unplanned stuff happens. Health is everything. Life is fleeting. You'll never be as young as you are today. And with all that in mind, don't wait. Plan to get in the game.